Instagram pin posts can be easy to design, but also a little bit tricky because a great way to make these just wow is to make this pinned post seamless. And by seamless, I mean looks like it's one long flowing banner because pinned posts are an incredible way for you as a business owner to, to build trust, to share your expertise, to build credibility the second someone looks at your Instagram page because these posts, they stay there all of the time. It means that no, no matter what you post tomorrow or the next day or the next day, these three posts will stay at the top of your Instagram feed. But the reason I'm making this tutorial as a graphic designer is twofold. Firstly, I wanna show you how to do it really well. Secondly, it's actually changed in the last couple of weeks and I want to make sure that you are up with the latest on how to make this post really easily compared to what it was in my last tutorial because things have tweaked since then. So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie and it is so great to have you here. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button for more incredible Canva and business tutorials. But my jam is helping business owners to use Canva strategically to help to grow their business, not just to make it pretty and waste your time because we can do that in Canva. It's a giant rabbit hole. And so a few weeks ago from the date of releasing this video, Canva released a new size that we can do. And it's where we can make our posts even taller. I'll link the video here if you want to give it a watch because it, I, I do recommend giving a watch. It's really, really helpful. In essence, we have more space we can even take up on the Instagram grid. Now you don't have have to use this size it's totally up to you but what it means which is making it so easier for DIYs and all of us to be honest is that Instagram isn't going to crop your posts at all when they're on the Instagram grid so by Instagram posts I'm meaning carousel posts and static posts I'm not talking about reels at this point if you make a real cover Instagram's not cropping the edges of that so you're all okay just keep the most important stuff in the middle of that page because the tops and bottom will get cropped and so if you post on Instagram using the previous size that I've shared about the four by five ratio, which is 1080 wide and 1350 high, if you post in about 33 pixels from each side of your graphic, it's gonna get chopped off on your grid. This isn't usually an issue until you're trying to do a seamless pinned post when you want all of your posts to look like they're flowing together because when you crop off the edges of all of them, they're not flowing together. But with this new post size, they are. And so I'm gonna show you how to do it in this updated version, which is actually so much easier and so much simpler. So first, when you're in your Canva, I want you to open up a brand new design. Don't try to go to the pre-made sizes, at least at the time of recording this, they haven't actually updated this size to be available as an option for Instagram. So what I want you to do instead is go to the custom size and I want you to type in 1080 pixels wide and 1440 pixels high. Then press create new design. Now for this, you're going to want to have three different covers. Now you can choose when you do your pinned posts to have just three separate posts, or you can choose to have three separate posts that are carousels. So they've got pages inside those pages. I'm not gonna show you how to do the inside of those pages because that's pretty much just like designing a normal carousel, just make extra pages and stick them after each other inside. So what I'm gonna show you today is just how to do the front covers of each of those posts. Whether you choose to do a carousel underneath them or not isn't the point. The point is making that seamless look. So what you need to do is make three of these pages. I'm just gonna change my view to thumbnail view so I can see each of my pages below. I can do three separate pages here. Next, I'm gonna make my, make my background. So I'm gonna just gonna do one plain flat color in the background for all of these pages to make sure that it just flows seamlessly without me having to worry about anything. I'm going to press change all so all of the whites are changed. Now you can choose the content you want to do in these carousel posts. I find it's really good to do some sort of introduction post. You can kind of share your expertise a little bit about you get to know your audience. Second post is probably really great to share some social proofs. So taking your viewer through like testimonials or some some client work or like client proof or like anything at all that you can do to show that you actually know your stuff. And then the third one I like to do usually to share a bit of how to work with you and so you can choose to do this as one just static post or inside a carousel um, but in essence what you want to do mostly is just add in some stuff so I'm just going to work through and add in some graphics now so I've just gone and added in this design um, and you can see I've got some text here nice to meet you. I'm Jackie designer coach Canva lover mum and I've added in a picture of myself now what I want to do is have this picture go across into my next slide so the easy way to do this, if you trust the process, is as follows. Firstly, I want you to press R on your keyboard. When you do that, a rectangle or a square comes in. If you don't have a keyboard or you don't want to do that, you can just go to Elements on the left-hand panel up here. Go to Shapes and insert a rectangle. Anything with a flat edge will be okay. Don't worry about the color of this. We're just using it as a marker right now. So I'm going to bring this square right to the edge of my design until it snaps on the edge. I'm gonna press shift on my keyboard to click and then click down on the picture of me as well. I'm then going to right click and press copy, then click on my second slide, right click and press paste. You can see that picture of me is there. Now I want you to hold down shift on your keyboard while you drag that picture of you across or whatever your picture is, it can be anything you're wanting to have across both sides until you no longer see that square. You'll know that it's gone because you can see here when I tried to like select it again, it was still there. 
and you can see that there's still a tiny bit of it there. So I'm just going to hit my arrows across a couple more times until it's totally gone. And if I try to grab it again, it's actually disappeared. Canva doesn't let me pick it up anymore because it's totally gone. And so now this design, this picture of me and this this shoulder here is actually going to seamlessly join together. And because there's no grid crop, we don't have to worry about doing anything else. This is now going to be seamless once we post it. So I'm going to now grab this rectangle and delete it because we don't want that anymore. But I want to show you something that I just made you do that you, I didn't explain. So if I go back for a moment, I told you to press shift and hold that down. The reason I said that was because if I was just to drag this across, I could, I could move it up and down anywhere and it might not actually line up. Like if I put this here, it's not going to line up to this page anymore. So holding down shift actually keep things in line from where you grabbed it from. So I'm going to press this again and holding down shift means that if I move my, 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 my cursor up and down, it barely moves. It just stays in that same spot. So I can know that if I'm doing this I can trust that it's going to be aligned all right I'm going to work on the next design all right so I've now I've added in some testimonials in here and I'm now going to grab this little blur that I've got and make that flow across to the next page so again I'm going to press R on my keyboard insert that make sure it's lined right on the edge of the design hold down shift and select the next element press copy or you can press Control c or command c on your keyboard as a shortcut press paste and then hold down shift while you drag it across and make sure that square is totally gone still there a little bit it's all gone. I'm now going to go back to my previous slide and delete this square. Do not forget this step or it's going to look real ugly. Press delete and then work on the design for my third slide. There we go. And now this design is totally seamless across here. I've got to make sure I go and delete that picture of myself there. And all I need to do now is press share, download, select PNG and download these to my computer and send it to my phone. I can then go to my Instagram, select the post I wanna do. Now there, there is a note here on the order to post these. I always select the last image first, post that, then post the middle image and then post the final image. Add whatever caption you want to and press share. Now you just need to go in and select your last post, pin that first by selecting on the post, press the three dots and press pin to main grid. And then you can do that on all three of your posts. Do the last post first, the middle post second, and the first post last from right to left. And then you have a beautiful seamless pinned post. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to stay tuned for more. And if you're wanting help on designing your own business brand and graphics so you can actually make posts like this that look incredible and learn how to do, do design well, I have a whole course teaching about Canva, branding, and design for your business called DIY Design My Biz. I'll put all the details below in the description, but I highly recommend checking it out if you are serious about your business. All right, I'll see you next video. Bye.